Congratulations. He's a gift from God to me. Please welcome Joseph. to walk around a little bit when I talk here. My name is Joseph Vargas. Uh, I was born in California during a time where you could still see a lot of the liberals really taking over. At the age of 14, I started studying human behavior, which means the way people think would actually motivates the mind to actually do certain type of behavior. So by the time I was 18, I was already going to Austin, being hired by both Republicans and Democrats to tell them how to actually con convert different uh, districts, different types of people, white people, black people, Hispanic people, what makes them click, how can we sell these ideas to them? I was there since the age of 18 to tell them how to do this. A couple of years later, I found out what they were doing, which is really something I'm very not really honest, so I left them. But they had hired many people like me that understand this. And right now, I see them doing it to a level, and I see a lot of people on our side that don't understand what it is. So I came back several years back, educating people what it is, and after seeing so many people on TV, even with some of our elected officials that keep falling for this, I decided to come back and, I call it the Democrat modus operandi. If there's any law enforcement out here, you know that mo uh, modus operandi, it's really the criminal way or tactic to do something. But the t Democrat modus operandi is the same thing. This is normally, a one hour presentation that I will be going through you through in case anybody has any questions. I always tell everybody I speak to, I'm not usually here to motivate, because motivation is great. There's only one problem with motivation. And anybody who's ever tried to lose weight at the beginning of the year knows what happens. After the first couple of months, you lose it. Unless you have a self-discipline. Self-discipline means you actually have a reason for doing something that even in the morning when you're there without anybody motivated, you get up and you go. The same thing happens to a lot of Republican groups. We have a reunion with like-minded people and we're rah, rah, rah. Then we go home and our neighbor talks to us about the racist Republican party. What do we do? We take a couple of steps back. We don't want to engage in the conversation. Hopefully after this presentation, you have an idea how to actually engage with these conversations and know where this is coming from. The three biggest procrastinations that we have that I've seen travel across the state, is a lot of us see a problem, and what do we do? We like to talk about it. We like to have meetings about it, and we love to read about the problem. But what is the one thing we sometimes fail to do that actually keeps these problems from occurring? Anybody? Yeah, we're on a solution, not a problem. Yes, we have to take the action. And that is something where we fail. And Democrats don't. Their meetings, they don't have meetings to say, let's talk about how bad their Republicans are. They have meetings to say, how are we going to get rid of them? How are we going to push our critical race team? How are we going to push our leftist agenda? You know, we have meetings to say how bad they are, but what are we going to do to get rid of them? Because their meetings, I'll tell you one meeting I was in in the 1990s. It was in Austin. That was 18 years old. It was a meeting of about 20 people. There were some Republicans, some Democrats, there's even clergy in there. Because they're gonna plan how to actually sell some school bonds to the non people. I was there to tell them how to present it to the Hispanics so that they would buy it, how to present it to the white people so they would buy into it, and how to present it to the African Americans so they would buy into it. That's how they were preparing. They were saying, how are we gonna do they engage, they actually strategize, they actually have plans. That's why you see them getting all their people into the courts. You see them getting their people into the school boards. So it doesn't matter how much we complain about them. Until we start getting our own people in those, those problems are going to continue. And people say, well, we have to call the school board, we have to call our elected officials. That's great too. But let me ask you this. If your spouse is cheating on you, and you tell them, you better stop cheating, and you continue to cheat, are you going to continue to just tell them? Is that going to solve the problem? When elected officials are constantly voting against your principles, they're telling you something. And you can call them all you want and you continue to do it until we get rid of them. 
that's when you're going to have to engage in some change. Now, I have another course, aside from this, that teaches you how to actually run the campaign and win. In political activism, just because we're busy doesn't mean we're necessarily being effective. Now, something I had to learn the hard way. I was in all these different organizations. It was like over 20. So every single day of the week, I was in a meeting. But that didn't give me time to actually, a lot of these meetings, I noticed that I would go to, they were just rubber stamps for elected officials, but there's no, nobody being held accountable. When they were voting wrong, nobody said anything. Don't say anything, because then, you know, you're a troublemaker. So I was like, no, I'm wasting my time. We have to know the difference. We have to be effective. Now, how I def define effective means you get the results you want. Are we getting the results you want right now? Okay, then that's on us. Okay, you're never gonna persuade somebody who uh, is already that Democrats are in office. You know, like a lot of people say, we'll call Joe Biden's office. He does not care. And I'm talking to so many people, elected officials on both sides, and some of them literally tell us, yeah, you keep them calling us. It's like you care, and they'll tell you that. So being effective means you're gonna get the results you want. And if we're not being effective, that means it's something we're not doing right. So I'm gonna cover first of all the Democrat Modus operandi is, how they use emotion and negative branding, how the issue is never the issue, and the deceptive use of language, the leftist media, and more importantly, how do you push back against the Democrat Modus operandi? I would encourage anybody if you ever to take a couple of notes on this, because you can go back and read this, and you're going to see a lot of things different. Number one, what is the Democrat modus operandi? We're going to discuss that. You see a lot of riots, you see a lot of people out there supposedly having these different uh, protests. You see that REBCON.US? You see that in a lot of the banners of Black Lives Matter. You see a lot of, for a lot of even when people out there in Wall Street, if you look that up, I'm sure some of us have been bothered looking up. You know what that is? That is the Revolutionary Communist Party of America. They're the ones sponsoring these events. But a lot of us have been looking, and they're putting it right out there for us to see. So, Sun Tzu, The Art of War. Has anybody ever read this book? Okay, one of the reasons that I say that we should pay attention to what he said is that he said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of printed battles, which means you have to know where your enemy is coming from. If you don't understand where he's coming from, you're going to fall all the time to these traps. And you have to know yourself. That means what do you represent? What are your values? What are your conservative values? How far are you willing to go to preserve and protect these? Same thing with your Christian values. So it's important that we know how they work. And I have not seen many courses on this. It's always like, we're the right ones of the right ones, which is true on the principles, but we don't understand where they're coming from. And they're really going to circles around us for the last probably more than 50 years. These are another two books that I've always researched. Rules for Radicals and the Communist Manifesto. I've read both of these books and they lay out their plan. But yet, even after them laying out their plan, we still don't see what they're doing and we always fall for their traps. And I'll give you an example of how we fall for their traps. In the Communist Manifesto, Karl said, we're going to have people that oppose us. We're going to have people that do not want the establishment of communism. That's okay. We don't care what they say, because most Christian conservatives, all they do is they just have meetings and complain about a problem. He actually said that. But they're never going to engage or get their Christian people elected. So it's okay. Just keep monitoring them. And he even said they're to negative friendly, to keep them quiet, because he said Christian conservatives in other words, Christians do not know how to fight back. They can complain about it, but they will never get their people involved in the political system. So I define the Democrat modus operandi as the use of emotion, negative branding, selective outrage, and language. And you see this right now in every single one of their issues that they have. They always attach emotion, and I'm going to tell you why. The part of the brain that interprets emotion is called the limbic system, okay? The limbic system also has to do with your behavior. So why is this a win for them? That means that if they can influence your emotions, they've already influenced your behavior. So if they can actually get you to sympathize emotionally with them, you're going to vote with them. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. Now, the human brain cannot 
interpret facts and figures as fast as it can figure out emotions. <laughs> I'll give you an example. When you meet somebody, a lot, most of the time, you remember how that person made you feel, not what they said, right? You remember John Doe or meeting Jane Doe? Yeah, they were like, they seemed like a nice person. It was pretty much how they made you feel. The Democrats have a lot of people that work with them. In fact, in the day, they had people like me working with them. I know they have many more like me that could actually tell them how to do this, how to attach the emotion to their argument. So that is why they attach the emotion. Negative branding, that is another thing. A lot of times we know that negative brand, even on just regular issues or regular products, when there's something out in the news bad about a product, people pretty much get a doubt in mind to support or purchase that product. They do it to us all the time. Those two things are one of the two most important ones. Number one, emotion, and number two, negative branding. Y'all remember this Time Magazine cover? Am I blocking you guys? A little? <laughs> Y'all remember this Time Magazine cover? It's not complete, but it's a little point. It's a little bit crying. That's the emotional part they're appealing to. Okay? They want sympathy from its viewers. A little bit crying. Your first thought is, who made this little bit crying? Number two, what was the second one I said? Is the one they used? Negative branding. Here it comes. There you go. You got emotion and you got negative branding, and you want people to remember that when you go to the voting poll. But notice how that was attached to the emotion. So they can, people actually, the Democrats will remember this. And anybody who's against it, they'll say, well, you must be supporting President Trump making the rose pride. And we don't know how to fight that. We could have used the same thing, emotion and negative branding. Emotion. Here's an aborted baby with the phrase, you're not welcome in America. Emotion. Negative branding. This is one example, but we don't know how to use these. Or something's intimidating not to use these. And this is even in debates. How to use how to expose each of the same tactics. One of the things to also remember, when it comes to Democrats, the issue is never the issue. Every argument they present that they're concerned about is never the true issue. This is why our Republican elected officials should never ever concede one step into anyone of their arguments because they always have something in mind and it's just the first step of something else that they want. It's a build or false accusation. But all of these things are smoke screens, distractions from the true argument. And I'll give you some examples. You remember uh, when Brent Kavanaugh was accused by some women, people were saying, we are the Democrats, we are the party of people, we think you should believe women. And all these other Republicans that call themselves Christian, they don't believe a woman that was sexually assaulted. See how they use them. Now, a lot of Republicans said, okay, well, if that's the case, then I want to, I want you to know that I am also concerned, so we're going to go and investigate more with Brett, Brett Kavanaugh. That was wrong, because remember, the issue what? Never the issue. The issue is never the issue. So the issue of believing women was never the issue. Andrew Cuomo had several women come up to him and accuse him. Bill Clinton. Joe Biden, were these people out there in the streets with believe women? Because the issue of believing women was what? Not really an issue. And that's why we should never fall for it. Here's another one. Remember? President Trump is so evil, he's got kids in cages. You remember that, right? Look at what these Christian conservative Republicans are doing. They're putting little kids in cages. And what did a lot of electric Republicans do? Well, okay, let's, we don't want to do that because we don't want to be uh, depict that as a party that hates little children. Now, have you seen how the borders are right now in all these places? Do you see people out there saying kids in cages? No kids in cages? Why? Because the issue of kids in cages was what? Never the issue. It's never the issue. But even you saw some of the elected people fall for it, right? You remember this guy? He was always at every press conference drilling and accuse me. Always these passive aggressive questions. Do you know what a passive aggressive question is? Yes. There's an accusation. It's not a question, there's an accusation in, in the question, whatever, you know. Uh, what are you doing with this racist policy? You see, they're telling you that the policy is racist. It's not a question. He was always there saying, when I just see the answers for America, I'm, I'm a journalist. I'm going to get answers for America. 
Have you seen him at any of the Biden press conferences and tennis hockey's? No. Because the issue of trying to get answers from America was never the real issue. His issue was just, he was there to attack President Trump. And I'll show you a slide why he did this. The issue is never the issue. You have to remember that. So anytime that you're confronted with any type of accusation or any type of, you know, thing, let that click before you answer. Because if you start answering it, if you answer a false accusation, you start legitimizing it. So you have to expose it. Expose the silence you take me. In every one of your answers, you expose it. If somebody tells you you're racist and you start telling them why you're not, you lost them. Because that means you forgot that the issue is not the issue. They know you're not racist, but they know that you're very easy to quiet or keep silent if they're calling you racist. So you have to know how to respond to these things. Now, the accepted use of language, this is something they've really taken over. Any type of topic, you know, I've consulted for numerous candidates and they like to prepare. I consulted for one for the Supreme Court in Texas. Um, hired me for the uh, primary, C1. And told me, I don't think I need anybody for the other one. I'm going against a Democrat. This is a bad Democrat. There's no way I can win. So you don't understand. Democrats don't get elected based on their qualifications. They get elected based on if they're gonna push their leftist agenda. So you need to know how to fight this. He said, no, he went on his own and he did lose. Because he thought that his arguments, he was going to use facts and figures. But remember I told you that Democrats don't use facts or figures or logic or statistics. What do they use? Emotion. Emotion. And you have to know how to counter this. You want to talk about immigration laws? You want to talk about why you're a xenophobe? Is anybody here in debate, was in debate in school? You were in debate? So you remember what changing the frame is, okay? Changing the frame means that if you and I are debating, and you present an argument, if I could get you to change the frame of topic, I already beat you. And Democrats do it to us all the time. You wanna talk about immigration? If I could change the frame to talk about how racist that is, and if you can't bring it back up, which is what we, the Republicans always do on TV, you see them, I'm not racist, let me tell you, you know, my family, but you said, no, no, no. You gotta expose the technique, okay? Same thing with anything you're pro-life, anything that you're with, traditional marriage, or even pro-America. You remember this term, illegal alien? That's actually on federal code. Now the Democrats come and say, you know what? We're the sensitive party. We don't think we should call people that. And you mean racist Republicans should change it. The issue what? It's never the issue. But we fail at it. So we start saying, okay, well, well, so you can see that we are good, sensible people. What would you like for us to call it? Well, how about illegal immigrants? We're like, and a lot of us said, well, that's not too bad. I mean, they're still illegal immigrants, so okay, we'll concede. Did they stop there? No. 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 Then they came back and said, no human is illegal. Because you be immigrants. And like, a lot of what? well, okay, we don't really think we're evil, so okay, we'll stop. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that. But did they stop there? No. Now they're refugees and they're asylum seekers. And if you want to call yourself a Christian and you don't give you don't want these refugees and asylum seekers here, then you're not a true Christian because Jesus was a refugee. You see how they twisted everything? You see how we never should have conceded the first time? We need to think ahead of these people. Phobia. If you don't agree with me on anything, all I have to do is call you a phobic. And we don't know how to counter that. And I've seen people on TV always trying to think how they're not a different type of phobia. You have to remember that liberals always say that they want tolerance, you know, to the Marxist ethnic on agenda. Just tolerate it, just, you know. But they really want a submission. Because they not only want to, they want to be able to push your leftist agenda, but you want to keep your Christian values quiet. You can find it quiet when we took over the country. That's how they consider you being tolerant, which is a very weird definition of tolerance. Homophobia. If you don't agree, with homosexuality, then you have homophobia. Notice that you may not have a phobia, it's like you're afraid of these people. You may not even hate these people, you just don't agree with that type of behavior. But right away, remember how they use emotion? Phobia has a negative connotation meaning to the word. So that means that puts you in a negative uh, perspective with people. So Republicans are homophobic, they hate you know, homosexuals. In reality, we should turn it around. Do they have heterophobia? 
Are they struggling to pay them salary? Yeah. People, we need to start using these because that's the same thing that they do. Yeah. Transphobia, you don't want to pay for my sex change? Then you must have transphobia. You no? Know? You must have biological phobia. <laughs> Here's another one. 9 11 was caused by planes or terrorists, but you better not even mention that it was radical Muslims. Because if you do, you must have Islamophobia. Now, notice that you heard this in the news all the time. Some people have Islamophobia against these people that committed 9 11. Do you ever hear them say anything like a group of people with Cristiano? Phobia did this. <laughs> but we can use the same thing, we don't. Most of us say, do you have Islamophobia? Uh, no, uh, no, I'm not afraid of, no, I'm, I'm okay with, with people doing this. See, we don't understand the Asian not the Asian, and we start responding to them and we fall for their traps. Remember, don't just make a distraction. Expose the science and technique. Expose what they're actually doing. Because they'll manipulate the definition of words to deceive the American people. Why is it that I haven't heard anybody elected the officials say, Democrats like to be call everybody a phobic, Democrats like to use emotion. You don't see these anywhere. And I think this is one of the most important trainings that we should get to the party. Because I see it all the time. People on TV, people on newspapers. I used to have a lot of press call me and want to interview me, but when they saw me using this against them, they stopped interviewing me. Studio Sky TV. And a lot of the phrases that they use, they purposely give them a name so that you feel guilty for questioning them. And I'll give you some examples. Planned Parenthood. Is there anything about planning to be a parent at Planned Parenthood? No. Well, contrary, right? But it sounds real good. Planned Parenthood. Peace of protest. It's a peaceful protest if you're burning other people's property and looting. Social justice. Social justice. Sounds like a good thing, and you would think, how can it be against justice in society? Except that to them, how they define justice is very different how we define it. Justice means me taking your stuff. It should be okay. That's justice. Now, that's why they give it the name social justice. Because if you question it, that means you're a mean and evil person. And instead of falling for them, justifying this, we should actually expose the techniques that they're using. Equality. Wow, sounds good. Who could be against equality, right? Except when you see equality means less white people and more minorities. That's very equality. <coughs> Racial sensitivity training. Y'all don't want to be sensitive? Y'all are against sensitivity? The way to respond to these expose, remember you have to expose. So you have to define these things. When I've been uh, interviewed by press, they always like to ask me passive aggressive questions, especially when there's a group of people. Because they're trying to call you something in front of the crowd. But I know that technique. So I respond to them accordingly and educate the crowd. But I expose the words that they're using. Critical race theory is another one. They're talking about you don't want to teach the true history of America. Very few people say, well, that's not the real history of America. This, no. I'm not going to win that argument. Expose what they're actually trying to do with this. That's where we need to go. But that's, there's a lot of people that don't know about these things. They don't understand that the Democrats are not using uh, are using these words in tracks to just trying to get them to vote for them. Black Lives Matter, that's a very difficult one. If I ask you, do you support Black Lives Matter? There's two things that come to mind. Number one, you remember all the right and evil that happened. And number two, is this about me not liking black people? They're getting comfortable. How can you answer to that? Because it sounds good. Do you support Black Lives Matter? And they're just waiting for you to say no. So I can just get that rubber stamp of racism on you. But we have to expose. I'm going to show you how to answer these questions here in a second. Now, the Democrat Mono Sakurai is all composed of the leftist media. And you have to remember this. They're not journalists. They're not reporters. They're leftist socialist activists posing as reporters to pursue their leftist agenda. And you have to treat them as such. There should be nobody in this room that should go out there and say, I don't know why CNN does that. No, you know. 
They're not reporters and they're not journalists. They're the victim for a purpose. Okay, and when they come up to me and start asking me all these passive aggressive questions, I start asking, well, first of all, let me get this straight. Are you a journalist or are you an activist? And what do they tell me? Well, I'm a journalist. Okay, then that means you want to get both sides of the story. So let me tell you about this. Are you interested in this? Because most of the people like you, you guys are activists and you're pursuing the question, they just ask certain questions. You know? They did that in Ted Cruz, remember? Selective outrage. You know, um, it offends me when you do it, but not when my friends do it. You know, selective. And we make a big deal about stuff when it's somebody that we don't like. You know, you do see a lot in politics. Remember these peaceful protests? And in the news, if you watch the leftist media, you ever seen these are peaceful protests. Do you remember this, being in the media, Black Lives Matter, riot? You know how it would have made the media? Right. Okay. Because they're not journalists and they're not reporters. What are they? Activists. They're leftist socialist activists. Here's a Black Lives Matter riot. There's a black person beat up on a white person. Nothing to see here, right? Now imagine being the other way around. You know how this would have made it to the news? Yeah. I'm sure we like that too. Joe Biden is playing Mario Gopart with his granddaughter. What a great grandfather president we have. Did you ever see any type of coverage from President Trump is in office? No. no. We're at the leftist media. Ted Cruz, when he went down to Mexico, the media comes up to him and says, hey, pretty much the first hand, how do you feel about being down there in Mexico where people are freezing and dying in Texas? Now you have to remember the issue was. Never the issue. Never the issue. But Ted had a name for my presentation here, so what does he tell him? He says, well, okay, I, I see your point, okay, so I'm gonna go help. And then he started helping people, because he thought that was a real thing that they wanted. Is that what they wanted? No. After he did this, what did they do? Oh, look at this guy, just a photo op. Just a photo op, so, so you can't please them. If you try to work with them, they're not gonna work with you. And how this in my book is coming up. A deal involves people giving in, they want everything about giving it to them. So you should never make, you can't make a deal with them. The propaganda and headlines, this is what most of the people that are not, most of the people in this room are very uh, politically savvy. You watch the news, you read the news, you, you, you keep up with what's going on in the political world. Most of the people out there don't. So they just have these headlines to go by. Look at the words that are used, CNN. Justice Ferris Thomas reveals some sympathy for Trump's baseless. Okay, now this is supposed to be a news article. You can see the agenda they have, right? Because they're not reporters, we know that already, right? The big lie about Trump winning. Election lies are still being amplified. Did you ever see this with the Russian Commission? No. Did you say that, well, these Democrats have these baseless claims that Russia, no, they never said that, right? The experts say they could be true, could be true. See, but they never call them baseless because they're not journalists and they're not reporters, right? What are they? That's right. You remember this? Is Trump mentally ill? There's a American psychiatrists are weighing in. They're concerned about President Trump's mental health. Now, a lot of even Republicans said, well, we're concerned too. I mean, is this something we need to look at? Because they didn't know that the issue was. Never the issue. Have you ever Biden tried to get one of them? <laughs> Where are these psychiatrists, right? <laughs> Because the issue of these guys was what? Never the issue. And we should have never came into the first step, right? I'm sure if any of y'all are Facebook warriors, you're gonna see this a lot, right? Yeah, no, no, you can't say that. You know, you can't say that. You know, you can't expose the truth. So now how do you push back? You gotta remember number one, the issue what? Never the issue. So anytime you're watching leftist news or anytime somebody tells you, just remember that. Anytime they present something, they're saying, well, we want we support illegal immigration because we're humane. No. And don't ever fall for that. That's not the reason you want to do it. And you can see it right now because they're okay with people from Mexico and South America coming over because most of these people are using socialist programs and we're gonna vote Democrat. What about the key that have already seen what communism does? Are they gonna vote Democrat? No. Well, like, so do, are they welcome here? No. Like no. 
see the issue of being Ukraine has nothing to do with it. Don't forget this is the same party that's okay with abortion. This part is the same part, the Democrat Party, that has actually sent all your jobs out to the country. So there's nothing to make about them. We should not fall for that. Don't defend the false distraction. What do you have to do instead? Expose the silence and Expose. And they aren't journalists, not reporters. What are they? Activists. That's right. Liberals purposely give co uh, their causes and organizations deceiving names. That's because they want you that first glance, they want to make you feel guilty for a question, remember? All the black lives matter, playing parenting. Everything they want to sound so good that nobody better question because we're gonna go and put rubber sound and be evil. How to respond when a race being liberal asks you a passive aggressive question. <coughs> racism, everybody's racist, right? That's one of the biggest arguments. Now, Democrats have meetings like this and they say, okay, um, when a Republican tells you something they don't want to do, just call them a racist. They're weak. Go, go give you whatever they want. I was in uh, Nevada a couple of years back at a commissioner's court. And I was outside, the attorneys were here talking to the people. I was out on the highway and I heard this attorney tell the people that they were going to get what they wanted because if not, he says, you tell that white boy in there that this is your country and you're racist and you call them racist and you just watch how they can do whatever you want. And you know what? It worked. They got the problems that they wanted because we don't know how to push back. So how do you push back when somebody says, hey, oh, well, it's racist right away. Any issue you want to talk to, because uh, Democrats are taught to when they can't win anymore in an argument with facts and figures and statistics, they're told just tell them racism and they'll go away. You have to remember expose, right? You can't just say I'm not racist, you have to expose it. So you have to define the technique. So you have to say, Democrats call it considered racist is the go-to smear until they use when they can't win an argument facts or figures. It is a deliberate distraction from the true issue at stake. It's a very effective negative branding tool that has been taught to Democrats to attack conservative character, attack his or her credibility, and avoid having to answer with facts. It's a direct Democrat science technique. So you tell them, I know that you've been told to call me a racist, you can't win arguments, but why don't you give me some facts and figures on this argument instead of just or to call you know, the technique that you've been taught by your fellow Democrats. Racial sensitivity training, very similar to the critical race theory going on. Remember, a lot of people say critical race theory is bad. You have to remember, a lot of people in the audience have no idea what that is and what it does. So we have to educate and expose. The racial sensitivity training, which could also be the critical race theory. And you have to tell, you know, it sounds like a good thing, right? Uh, it almost makes you feel guilty for questioning, but in reality, let me tell you what this teaches. It teaches white people to feel bad about the color of their skin. So this is racism, and in America, we don't tolerate racism of any kind for people of any race. So you define what a tactic is, and you also define what this really does. Because that's a lot of people coming to like, what is critical racism? They're just trying to show that America had slaves, and that's, they're saying that the racist Republicans don't want that in schools. No, that's not what it is. That's what we have to make sure we educate people what it is. Black Lives Matter. That's the one that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. How do you answer when somebody tells you that? Black Lives Matter, once again. If you're asking me if I believe the last black people matter, then yes, I do believe they do. So do the lives of brown, white, young, any other type. Skin color. And then, see, so you exposed what they're trying to do. You got that out of the way. Next. But if you're asking me about support, the organization that deceitfully took the name of Black Lives Matter to riot, loot, and create anarchy in the streets, then no. I don't support any organization that does that. So you expose and you educate at the same time. The reason we have to fight these people because of the words that they use, they've actually done a lot of people on board. They use the word choice. To do what? To make it in the room. We use the word free speech to what? To silence and serve their voices. Freedom of religion to actually attack Christianity. They use public safety to take away your guns. All we want is less crime. Give us our guns. Just like the Del Castle told the Cubans, right? Mimic humaneness and compassion. That's how they want to populate the country. They make it from anti American, anti Christian. You need to send refugees to eventually vote Democrat. That's what it's about. 
has nothing to do with being human and compassion. Have you heard anybody call him out on that? We don't. None of our legislators have heard call him out on that. The rule of law. That's what they're trying to use against President Trump, right? We just want the rule of law. We want to know if Trump legitimately won. We want to know. That's where we're having all these different types of commissions, all these task forces. What are they doing right now that people are questioning all the ballots for Joe Biden? Are they as open as wanting to have the rule of law? No. Because the issue of wanting the rule of law is not the issue. We you already know that, right? Voter rights. Republicans don't want people to vote, especially minorities, right? That's how they call it voter rights. They want to allow people to vote without IDs and constitutionally change state election law to favor Democrats. We need to talk about that. We need to call them out and say, uh, the Republican, they, I see a lot of headlines, CNN, even Univision. Uh, the Republicans have these restricted laws to vote. And nobody says, let me show you, expose the technique. I've not heard anybody do that. They won't talk to me. They know I've told them. It's called the Democrat Moral Saparanda. Their technique. What can you do? You have to educate your children and your friends and family. Just the same way you teach your children Christian values, you need to show them the Democrat Moral Saparanda. Because we are losing this country. And always remember when you're pushing back, you have to do two things. Don't just respond. You have to expose and then what? Educate. Now there's two types of people always, and this is pretty much an NGO organization. There's people that are just interested, and there's people that are committed. I'll tell you one thing, the Democrats are not just interested in taking this country away from us, or putting everything that the founding fathers had in mind. They are committed. They're putting a lot of things aside. They're not saying, well, you know, a lot of times people are just interested. Well, if there's something good on TV, or, you know, if I don't have a, John doesn't have a football game, then I'll go to your meeting or I'll do something. The Democrats are putting stuff aside. If you have an idea about the amount of money that have offered me to go back to work with them, it, it's, it's crazy. It just goes how committed they are. They really want to push their agenda. That is who we are up against. That is why we have to come together, which is very good why all of y'all give up your couple of hours of your Saturday to come here. Now, hopefully, we know what action to take. This is what we are up against, guys. We're leaving the country. Because they have learned how to use the Democrat Morris Authority about it very effectively. We need to learn not just how to reach that back. Remember, not just about motivation, but they have to discipline to fight back. We need to call our elected officials and show them how to push back. You have a problem with the school board, and you call them 10, 20 times, stop calling them. Start finding a candidate to replace them yeah. and find them. And we actually get the right people in there. We can complain all we want. Same thing with our state reps, our federal reps. They're not doing, if they're telling you that they're liberals with their voting record and you still don't believe them, that's if your spouse cheats on you a dozen times and you still think they're going to end up being faithful one day. They're not going to do it. Now, how would you feel if your spouse cheats on you a dozen times and you still keep saying, well, I'm going to stick around just in case, maybe, but I already told him or her that they're not doing it again, but they're still there, right? How does that, that's the same thing how we are when we still allow our elected officials to remain in office after they've shown us more than a dozen times. Okay? So, the biggest thing is being committed versus being interested. I always remember that. And I do have a course that teaches how to get people elected, teaches you everything from running the campaign to running everything else. My book will be coming next month, dealing to Democrat bonus up right now, which I even have these phrases on them, we can actually respond to them, and actually how to push back. Because to me, what's important is, it's not important to just get in together and say, let's talk about how right we are and how wrong they are. Let's talk about how we're gonna get rid of them, because we understand their agenda now. And that's gonna be up to all of us together. And that's what we do at the Farm to Get Society, educating people to actually understand. And it's kind of what, once you talk to them, and you understand, I, I talk to a lot of them, um, usually when new citizens, you know, I talk to them, they tell you, that's the word, first of all, why did you come from Mexico, South America, the United States? You were fleeing something, right? Okay. If you go Democrat, you're creating the same Gulfo that you fled from. They can tell you why. And that's what I'm talking about the socialist programs. And this is what's really happening. But what's happening a lot, Democrats think is, hello, you, you immigrant Korean. Those new racist Republicans, they don't like you, but we do. So come over here with us. And what we do, we don't do that. 
I saw this in one of the border towns, I think it was in El Paso. There were some new citizens coming out of the courthouse in the press was there. And there was a Republican booth. The media, the leftist media, remember they're not journalists? He goes up to the guy and says, hey Republican, come here. So you told me these new immigrants to do out to be Republicans. How do you feel about telling them that the President Trump is such a racist president? That person had a been to his course. So what do you say? Well, we just want people to know that not everybody's like President Trump. So like, we fall for their traps all the time, don't we? We have to know. I would have told you, you know what, first of all, that precisely why I'm here. Because they fled from a socialist government in Mexico and South America, and that's what the Democrats are doing here. So we are here to welcome them to freedom. The freedom is preserved for our conservative values, and that's what we're here as a Republican Party. To show them, I would have told to show them that the Republican Party is one with the values that they were seeking, and that's why they fled. If they were okay with Democrat principles, they could have stayed in Mexico and South America. But apparently that's not what they wanted. Okay, that's the type of values that we're really to with this people. My name is Joseph Vargas. Thank you so much for being here.